Starting today, December 20th, the weekly rotator raid is going to be Deep Stone Crypt. This means that the Deep Stone Crypt raid is farmable for the entire week, which means you can get red borders for every single weapon in the raid to whichever weapon that you want, whether it be the sniper, a hand cannon, the, the scout, whatever it may be, you can farm it for the entire week. Now, one thing to note here is that this raid is only going to be farmable twice before Lifefall. This week, on December 20th, and much, much later, closer to Lifefall, and that's it. You only have two weeks to farm out all these weapons that you want, other than buying one red border from Tanix each week. So I'm just going to show you how to farm the raid efficiently, what you should farm, what you should save for later, and so on. So let's get started with the two big questions. One, which weapons do you want to farm? And two, which encounters should you farm the weapons in? So let's go with weapons first. The obvious answer is going to be heritage and succession, right? Everyone and their mother is going to tell you these are the two guns to get. And they're not wrong. They're two very good weapons in the raid that you should definitely craft if you're able to. However, I do want to mention that there is a sleeper pick in this raid, and that sleeper pick is the Sword Bequest. Now, anybody that's watched me for a prolonged amount of time knows that I value this sword very highly and is legitimately one of the best swords in the game. For those that don't know, it has the highest impact damage of any legendary sword in the game, minus Crown Splitter, but Crown Splitter hits at the pace of a dying snail, so I kind of put Bequest above even that. Bequest also can roll things like Thresh plus a damage perk, which in theory you would think, oh, that doesn't sound all that great, but honestly, it adds up, given that you can farm, let's say, Law Sectors with a Thresh plus damage perk Bequest and get your super extremely fast to the point where you can get the Law Sector done in a minute and still get your super before you get to the boss. It also rolls things like Chain Reaction, which is great for crowd control and anything that has add density, like let's say a Devil's Lair GM. On top of all that, you can also pair this sword with Unrelenting plus a damage perk instead of Thresh, and then combine this with something like a Devour Warlock and be just straight up unkillable. Here's a run of me doing a Master Sector back in the day with both these together, and well, I just completely blitzed through everything with this combo, and this is before they put this as a craftable weapon, by the way. So now, it's actually even better. Now, while you're watching that, let's talk about the raid itself. So, for these weapons, these three, the recommended encounters that you're going to form are Atrax, because Atrax drops the sniper and the shotgun all in one encounter, and the drop rate is actually decent. And then, for Bequest, you can do Tanix. By the way, both of these bosses can be easily one-phased if you set up the right comp, so that's a plus as well. Encounters 1 and 3 just drag on forever, and also doing the challenges, which gives you the second drop for each encounter that you can farm, take forever. So between that and the bosses actually being nice and easy to one phase, I think you should not even bother farming for Posterity or Trustee, which is the scout and the hand cannon, and I think you should just buy those from Tanix each week with the weekly red border. Now, of course, if you are a psycho like me and you plan to get every red border, then yes, you can farm those other encounters. For those curious, the scout would be the first encounter, and then the posterity would be the third encounter. The slight plus to trying to farm posterity is that you can also get heritage in the third encounter as well, so at least you can try to farm the shotgun with the hand cannon, whereas trusty is, well, it's just trusty and a bunch of armor, so it's a terrible farm for that, in my opinion. So I would just buy trusty from Tanix. Now, speaking of Tanix, you can get Bequest and the machine gun from him. The machine gun right now, I wouldn't say is all that great. It doesn't have bad perks. It has actually pretty decent perks like killing tally, firing line, etc. It just right now doesn't fit anywhere in the meta. I mean, most machine guns don't fit anywhere in this meta besides like fixed odds. So you could farm it out. I, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but then you just have to like kind of put it in your vault and wait for a possible future meta where this would be very, very usable. Maybe one day. I don't know. Quick note also, I assume once this is the pinnacle raid for the week and you're farming the challenge at Tanix, the second drop from Tanix, the challenge drop, will probably be any kind of drop instead of the usual normal either sword or machine gun drop that Tanix would give. So one of his drops will probably be exclusively armor or there's two weapons, and his second drop will probably be a pool of literally everything. So you can in theory get any other weapon while killing Tanix, but your main priority for this encounter going in should be the sword or the machine gun. So let's talk about Atrax first. This is the harder of the two bosses to kill and farm, in my opinion, but with the right comp, it is much, much easier than people think it is. And really, there are two auto kill options for this encounter. For Atrax, you can either bring a bunch of Thunder Crashes or a bunch of Parasite launchers in your heavy slot, or you can bring both. So the way this encounter works is that Atrax has a very, very small window of you doing damage 
to her before she teleports and goes to the next clone. What this means basically is you need a ton of burst damage in a very short amount of time to do maximized damage to the boss. So this is where Thunder Crash comes in because the damage is instant and Parasite is a giant nuke in a X-20 shot straight to Atrax's dome. You can in theory use anything else that is very very quick burst damage like a Nighthawk shot for example. But Thunder Crash and Parasite I think are the best far and away two things that you can use for this boss fight. By the way, don't waste your time using Tether, Tractor Cannon, etc. It doesn't work on Atrax. I don't think they'll ever fix that working on Atrax. Something about it being a clone, not the real Atrax, blah, blah, blah. Don't waste your time with doing that. Just put on burst DPS weapon stuff. So, to do this, plus challenge, is simple. You send three people up, you keep three people down. You could send four up and keep two down if your team's experienced. Doesn't matter either way. You're going to want to keep one servitor alive upstairs. It could be any of the three. Just pick one. Doesn't matter. Usually, I pick top right just because. And what's going to happen is you're going to be eventually sending your entire team upwards and not killing that final servitor. One of your teammates will pick up op like normal. One of your teammates will pick up scan like normal. Eventually, the operator will ha have everybody come up with the pods, including themselves, and you'll have all six people upstairs. Once you have five of the six servitors dead and everyone's ready and upstairs, you're going to tell your team, kill the six servitor. Once that dies, DPS will start. Your scanner will be looking out for a tracks flowing to know which one to shoot. They'll call it out. You go over, do a 3, 2, 1. And at this point, you use your uh, Parasite, you use your Thunder Crash, whatever you're using for burst damage, instantly. Bang. Right away. And one of two things is going to happen. Either a tracks is going to get pushed to final stand immediately, or it'll be close, and you'll have to just send a couple of people downstairs. Now, quick thing to note. At this point, you should not send your operator down, keep them upstairs, and keep one other person upstairs that picks up the debuff that Atrax drops when she teleports away. Those two stay upstairs so that your op can just reset the timer on that person, and then you send three to four people downstairs for the clone. Obviously, the scan should go down to know where the next Atrax is. You go down, you immediately call it out, hit the correct Atrax, make sure you pick up the debuff again, and if she's in final stand, then get ready for final stand. If not, head back upstairs anyway, and you'll get a third clone. Hopefully by this time you are in Final Stand, but if you're not, just shoot the third clone and hopefully that pushes you there. And at this point, it's just a waiting game. Eight Atraxes will be up, the scanner will call out which one's glowing next, and then you just go and finish her off in Final Stand. Very simple if you just have either Thunder Crash or Parasite, or just bring both. Now if you don't have either of those, your next best option probably will be 1,000 Voices, or just bring a high damage rocket launcher to shoot Atrax in the face. Now let's move on to Tannic. The Tanix boss fight is quite literally the same as the normal fight, at least if you've been doing it the optimized way. It's the 4 bomb strat, so instead of breaking 2, you break 4, and you just kill him, and that's it. Nothing else changes for challenge to get your second drop. So you just assign an operator for the fight, and then assign a suppressor for the fight, the stun Tanix, and then scan will just sit there and do absolutely nothing, because you don't need them for anything, and you just get ready for damage phase. Nothing changes for damage phase here either. Bring whatever the best meta loadout is that you have, whether it be Cataclysmic, uh, Taipan, Reed's Regret, Storm Chaser, literally anything. You could just do Fusion Grenade Spam with Warlocks here, and Tanix will probably die anyway. Let's be honest, his health pool is not very high at all. The only advice I can offer for this fight is, one, bring Divinity. Not because of damage versus, because Tether does more damage now, at least for Diva percent, 30 versus 15. But the reason for this is, you bring it for the crit bubble, that way you have a little bubble, on his butthole that you can shoot with your precision weapons and get your damage done nice and easily instead of trying to aim for his head. Now, the other thing you can do is use weak and clear, and I mean your whole fire team, not just you. Yes, it is a global debuff that'll apply for everybody. However, the second ability for weak and clear can help you a lot. So what I mean by this is, let's say you're using Wither Horde and Cataclysmic, right? You shoot your weapons and your Cataclysmic shots run out after your four times and you're down to zero bullets. Now, normally you just reload the gun and keep going again, but if you train your weakened uh, clear effect and hit your Wither Horde shot, it'll auto-reload your Cataclysmic again and saving you time from reloading Cataclysmic and just going back into your bait and switch combo again just to do more damage much faster than you normally would. So that's just something to keep in mind. The final thing I'd offer is during the phase where Tanix will boop you out of the damage bubble and you have to go back in, what you could do is use abilities to stay inward and not get booped out thus giving you a couple of extra seconds of damage to get you that extra damage if you happen to need it to kill him. So for example, if you have multiple wells in your fire team and you guys are getting booped out of the arena, the second well who is going to pop anyway can use their well to stay in the bubble, plop down immediately, 
and then keep shooting their guns and getting extra damage while the extra people are getting back in. Speaking of the extra people, Titans, you have the thruster ability that you can use to stay in now instead of using a barricade. It's not like you're going to need a barricade for this fight anyway, so you might as well wear a thruster and try to stay in the DPS zone. Hunters, you have a couple of ways to do this. Tether can do this, but you probably want to have your tether down immediately for damage, and your dodge can do this. Also, you have your, uh, I guess, shatter dive ability on Night Stalker as well that you can do to kind of just sit your ass back down into the DPS bubble and not get moved. So you have a couple of options. In other words, just use your ability when he tries to knock you out and you get extra time for to DPS. And that's pretty much it to the Tanix fight. There's nothing complicated about it. Like I mentioned earlier, Atrax is much harder to get down if you're not experienced in it, in my opinion anyway. But neither of them are very difficult once you get a couple of runs in. So that is it. That is how I would form Deep Stone Crypt for all the Red Borders. We only have two weeks total until Life Mall to do this. So if you're planning to do it, just get it done now. Use these strats and uh, knock out a pain in the ass uh, now instead of later, you know? So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe. Does help the channel. The notification bell for more videos. Stream daily on Twitch. Link in the description below. And I'll uh, catch you guys in the next video. All right.